Hello, you're listening to the Witness History Podcast with me, Dina Newman. Do you know who Vladimir Lenin was? A Russian politician? A communist revolutionary? All this may be true, but in 1991, Russians came up with a completely different take on their former leader. A special program on Soviet TV claimed that Lenin was in fact a mushroom. It was the most famous hoax in the history of Soviet media and an example of just how confused many Russians became once the structures and certainties of the communist system began to collapse. Yalta Import SA. Yalta Import SA. It's May 1991, just months before the Soviet Union began to break apart. And elsewhere in Eastern Europe, communism had already died a death over a year earlier. Russians could barely keep up with the dramas unfolding on their screens. The centralized economic system they'd lived with for decades was unraveling. Politicians were openly attacking the Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev. Hypnotists and spurious healers promoted their talents on state-controlled TV and brash adverts claimed to offer miraculous products. Then, on May 17th, a special one-hour program unveiled an entirely new take on the familiar figure of Vladimir Lenin. Fly agaric is a hallucinogenic mushroom with a peculiar property. If a human being takes it regularly and for a long time, his personality transforms into the personality of a mushroom. Fly agaric has its own personality. And basically, I want to say that Lenin was a mushroom. The person who broadcast this ridiculous statement was a Russian avant-garde musician, Sergei Kuryokhin. His carefully constructed argument went something like this. Fly agarics are poisonous mushrooms, but in Siberia they were traditionally used by shamans for their hallucinogenic properties. Kuryokhin claimed that during his long exile in Siberia, Lenin regularly consumed these mushrooms and that his glorious communist revolution was a reenactment of his hallucinogenic visions. The Soviet symbol, the hammer and the sickle, symbolized mushroom picking because the hammer looked like a mushroom and the sickle a knife. And finally, the personality of the hallucinogenic mushroom, fly agaric, took over Lenin's own personality and Lenin himself turned into a mushroom. Sergei Kuryokhin was a leader in Russia's underground culture a central figure for creative talent at the time. Journalist Sergei Sholokhov was the presenter of the program about Lenin as a mushroom. Sholokhov was a trusted and respected investigative journalist, but on that occasion, jointly with his friend Sergei Kuryokhin, Sholokhov set out to test the credulity of Russian viewers and to have fun at their expense. Halfway through the program, the pair could not contain their laughter. (laughs) <laughs> Hang on, I have more to say. Uh, you have no idea what I'm about to say. I have a question. Are we recording? <laughs> I'm all ears. Calm down. I'm all ears. <laughs> Will all of this be broadcast? Of course. <laughs> Struggling to contain their laughter, the pair nevertheless managed to interview a biologist specialising in mushrooms a so-called international organization, Mushrooms for Peace, and even an inventor of a humane hallucinogenic bomb containing fly agarics. It was all a spoof of the news stories of the time. And despite the laughter, many admitted to being perplexed and shaken by the news. The next day, a group of old party comrades went to the head of communist ideology in Leningrad region and asked her if it was true that Lenin was a mushroom, as that's what they'd heard on TV. The party officials said our theory was wrong because a mammal could not be a plant. But our official response was as follows. The head of ideology should take upon herself the responsibility for calling Lenin a mammal, but we insisted that mushrooms were not plants, they were an entirely separate kingdom. Although ideologically risky, given that the Communist Party was still nominally in charge, 
the hoax did not cause Sholokhov any trouble. During the last months of the Soviet Empire, his bosses and state TV were pleased with the program's high ratings and did not care about the Communist Party opinion. Just two months later, the absurd story developed further when Sergei Kuryokhin, who was also a talented musician, was invited to play the piano in the radio studios of the BBC's Russian service. Sergei Kuryokhin. In his interview with the Russian service that day, Kuryokhin suddenly revealed another extraordinary piece of fake news. According to him, he had been forced to admit that Lenin was a mushroom under pressure from the U.S. intelligence agencies. I've been working for the U.S. intelligence service for the past 20 years. There is a reason why I use my fast staccato technique. It's a chance to send the maximum amount of sensitive information at super fast speed. The faster I play, the more information I can send over. An avant-garde musician, Kuryokhin was fascinated by the effect of rhythm on his audience. He loved turning everything he came across into beats. Once he even created a musical version of a BBC World Service news story, which read, The Russian government of Igor Gaidar and the team of President Yeltsin have not been able to solve the problem of the Black Sea Fleet. Back in Leningrad, where Kurochin lived, audiences were beginning to appreciate his art. His avant-garde band, called Popular Mechanics, a kind of noise orchestra, improvised on a variety of instruments, often found in skips and junkyards. The BBC recorded one of their rehearsals. Popular Mechanics concerts were always full to capacity. For Kuryokhin and his friend Sergei Sholokhov, the last years of communism were a time of incredible cultural change, offering exciting creative opportunities. That was the time of great creativity. It was very promising. New names appeared and new filmmakers showed their work. They were exploring new topics in the new reality. It was a powerful wave which gave us all hope. Kuryokhin was able to sense that wave. Sergei Kuryokhin died of cardiac sarcoma, a rare cancer, in 1996. A talented musician, today he is remembered in Russia mainly for his Lenin was a mushroom stunt. Kuryokhin's friend Sergei Sholokhov, a filmmaker, now lives in Moscow. That's it for this edition of the Witness History Podcast with me, Dina Newman. And if you don't want to miss any of our history programs, please sign up for the free daily download. Just search on your podcast app for BBC Witness. Have you heard about the dolphin that can tell you that there's a tsunami on the way? Or the kingfisher that can make a train go faster and more quietly? Or the mosquito that's actually helping us stay healthy? They're all amazing examples of how some of the brightest human minds are using tricks from the animal kingdom to inspire advances in technology, at home, in medicine, and even in space. I'm Patrick Ai, and I'm a wildlife TV presenter and biologist. And in my new podcast, 30 Animals That Made Us Smarter, from the BBC World Service, I'll be exploring some of the most fascinating stories from the frontier of modern science. We're launching at the same time as a new series of 50 Things That Made the Modern Economy. So once you've lapped all of that up, you'll have a much better understanding of how the world works and why. If you want to find out more, just search for 30 Animals That Made Us Smarter wherever you found this podcast and you'll be able to hear me talking a little bit more about it. That's 30 Animals That Made Us Smarter. Coming soon.